I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Like to be scared, but don't want to be too mainstream about it. And I'm all out of bubblegum. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 cult classics, category horror. Is anybody besides me interested in what's on the other side of that door? For this list, we've picked our favorite horror flicks that were not necessarily successful at the box office, but which gathered sizable followings over the years. That means movies that made a respectable amount of money in theaters do not qualify. We gotta just burn these things. Can't burn the find of the century. Number 10, Videodrome. Got something I wanna play for you. David Cronenberg films often find their way into cult culture, but this 80s sci-fi thriller is one of his weirdest. Come to me now. Max Wren is a TV exec who starts airing a show that depicts horrible acts of torture. What the hell's wrong with you? What follows is a series of increasingly weird scenarios in which Max develops a brain tumor, grows a VCR in his abdomen, and shoots cancer from a gun. Grotesque, as promised. If that's not enough to ensure Videodrome's cult status, actors like James Woods and Blondie singer Debbie Harry seal the deal. The television screen has become the retina of the mind's eye. No more talking. No more guessing. Don't even think about nothing that's not right in front of you. Number 9. Cube A cult classic so popular it led to a sequel and a prequel. This perplexing film about strangers trapped in a giant booby-trapped cube split critics. As with most cult films, the acting and script weren't its strongest assets. Shut up! But director Vincenzo Natale creates a hypnotizing thriller that never breaks tension. But let's face it, cult audiences ain't watching this one for the turmoil between the characters. They're more interested in pure, unadulterated gore. Mad. And Cube does not disappoint. I must remind you that the uh, scanning experience is usually a painful one. Number 8. Scanners. <laughs> Drawing from the period-specific obsession with psychic phenomena, Scanners has all the hallmarks of a B-movie romp. Oh, God. They killed Ben Pierce. Yes. Come on upstairs. And director David Cronenberg ramps up the gore with above-average effects and head-splitting scenes. Yes, mainstream audiences may know it best as that movie where the guy's head explodes. Not relevant. But cult fans appreciate it as a thrilling film with enough meat to spawn sequels and spin-offs. Also, gotta love that gore. Goddamn bunch of cutthroats. Number seven, The Hills Have Eyes. Incestuous cannibals strike a chord of fear in the human psyche, even though they rarely get their time to shine as horror movie villains. What the hell is this? That's just some stuff ah! that I... <laughs> Following the traditional horror flick setup, the Carter family is vacationing across America. One night, they stop in the midst of a barren desert and are ambushed by a freakishly disfigured clan of hillbillies. That juicy. <laughs> Classic terror ensues. <laughs> With its imaginative and funny elements making it stand out among its horror peers. Okay, Pluto. The Hills Have Eyes is a cult classic. I'm coming, Papa. Uh-oh. Our human spirit is corrupted. Why do we worship greed? Number six, They Live. You ain't the first son of a bitch to wake up out of their dream. Whether chewing bubblegum or kicking ass, this 80s sci-fi horror comedy delivers all-out action and alien invasion goodness with a wrestler thrown in for good measure. <laughs> Produced on a low budget like many John Carpenter films, They Live has garnered a healthy cult following for its engaging story and perfect blend of horror and comedy. She looks like a regular person, doesn't she, huh? Put him back on, formaldehyde face. Made when the fear of government intrusion was at an all-time high. What's your problem? This movie doubles as an interesting commentary on American politics even today. All the sex and violence on the screen has gone too far for me. 
damn fine custard. Number five, Dead Alive. Think I am ah! Peter Jackson's directing career was catapulted by this feature-length tribute to blood, guts, and ghastly gore. Yes, the Lord of the Rings Peter Jackson. Known as Brain Dead in its native New Zealand, and produced for a comparatively low sum in contrast to other contemporary horror flicks, this cult classic offers impressive production values and satisfying B-movie gore. It's also notable for its genuine comedic performances and no-holds-barred action scenes. I kick ass for the Lord! It's tasteless, messy, and awesome. Party's over. Number four, Reanimator. <laughs> Loosely based on the work of cult horror author H.P. Lovecraft, Reanimator tells the story of Herbert West and his trusty companion as they go about finding a cure for death. He was dead. Wackier and somewhat more comedic in tone than its source material, this horror classic delves into Lovecraftian lore with ghoulish glee. Oh, what are you doing on my rope? The film's impressive practical effects and hammy performances put it in the same category as the films we are about to list. Foolish, fatal mistake of coming here to challenge me. Oh, I have a plan. That knife will do you any good. He likes that knife, remember? Number three, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Produced on a shoestring budget, this cult classic became relatively successful at the box office. Word of mouth got around and soon everyone was rushing to see the antics of Leatherface and his hillbilly family. You like this taste? Exploring the concepts of isolation, primal instincts, and murder by power tools, Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre set a precedent for the senseless slaying of sexy teens and broke new ground, much like George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead did before it. I see things. We found this. Number two, The Thing. My God, what the hell happened here? Dark, brooding, and tensely apocalyptic, this John Carpenter film about a murderous alien entity didn't fare extremely well at the box office when it was released. You see, what we're talking about here is an organism that imitates other life forms. That's probably because it opened at roughly the same time as E.T. the Extraterrestrial, and it offered a completely opposing and antagonistic portrayal of possible alien life. Damn it, child, torch it! While that might have put off audiences, Clear. Clear. over time, its following grew like a slow contagion, thanks to home video, and it's now considered a classic of horror cinema. <laughs> Before we let our top pick scare the bejesus out of us, here are a few honorable mentions. undergo death and rebirth. Resurrection, if you like. The rebirth, sadly, will not be yours. Woman, no, no. In a minute, I'll go out in the hall and call them. Are you all right? Thank you. I don't know what I would have done. Number one, The Evil Dead. Before his wildly popular Spider-Man trilogy, Sam Raimi was easily the king of cult filmmaking. Oh, Ash, help me, please. After all, in his first foray into feature-length movies, he created The Evil Dead. That low-budget romp sees Bruce Campbell star as Ash, a man who finds himself in supernatural situations when he and some friends vacation in a remote cabin. Yeah, I think this is where we get off. 
You know the drill. Demons and spirits and possessions. Oh my. Why have you disturbed our sleep? Awakened us from our ancient slumber. <laughs> you will die! The film's popularity led to two sequels and a remake, and a reputation as the daddy of all cult horror flicks. We're gonna get you, not another peep. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite cult classic horror flick? For more terrifying top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.